and welcome back to Fall Broadcast Week 7. We're your hosts, Ranger Madison and Ranger Alyssa. You'll be able to see this broadcast every Thursday at 2 p.m. on Facebook, YouTube, and it'll also be available on our website. Yep, so every week we've been going over some fall photos, some tips mm -hmm. for visiting, we've done a peak check, and we always have a special guest at the end. Well, we thought it would never come, but our patience has been rewarded. It is beautiful up here in the park in the higher elevations. We're still seeing that green in the lower elevations, so the best is yet to come down there. But it is absolutely spectacular up here. We are seeing beautiful golden yellows and orange russet. So the fall colors will be marching down into the lower elevations over the next little bit here, but it is spectacular up here in the higher elevations. So come up to Shenandoah so that you can see the fall in its usual best dress. We are actually sitting on one of the rock walls at Hogback Overlook in the northern part of the park. And we chose this part because look at how beautiful that mountain is behind us. And you can also see it on some of the peaks below us, but then there's still some green at the lower elevation. So plenty of opportunity to see some fall foliage in the next couple of weeks. Um, one of our best secrets for seeing fall foliage is to actually view it from outside of the park. So if you use those southern entrance stations where there are less crowds, um, then you can see the park foliage when you're driving down 340 and 29 when you're going to Rockfish Gap and Swift Run Gap. So it's really, really beautiful. The landscape is something to see this time of year. Happy Halloween weekend. So what goes along with Halloween but pumpkins? And we love to see your pumpkins, but just in photos, not on the picnic tables. This year we actually, MPS, released some photo carving outlines for you. MPS Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm actually, we are going to carve pumpkins. My family and I are coming, carving pumpkins this evening and I plan to print those out. So I will even share my photos of my pumpkin if it looks good enough to share. <laughs> We'll see, I'm not the best at it, but yeah, definitely make sure that if you guys are doing that in the park to take those home with you. Um, something else about the campgrounds is that we have some closing dates coming up. So all of the campgrounds will be closing October 31st, with the exception of Big Meadows Campground, which will stay open until November 11th. So again, we are going to talk about our NPS app. And if you search for Shenandoah, then it's a really great resource for trip planning. And you can look at some of the park maps on there to plan some of your hikes that you wanna do while you're here. But you can also go on our website and download the maps there. So you have them in your pocket and ready to go. Or if you haven't done either of those things, you can still show up to the trailhead and take a picture with your phone or your camera that you have. And you can use that as a guide on your hike. And then just a little bit of a reminder, Shenandoah does not have a taxi service. So make sure whatever trail you choose to hike that you will get back to your car safely. Mm -hmm. So speaking of trails, we have hundreds of miles for you guys to explore out here. So there's no need to all pile on top of each other. If you see that there's um, the parking lot for a trail or an overlook is already full, just make Ico a leaf and leave. <laughs> There's lots of space to spread out and lots to see, so there's no need to all just cram into one section of the park. So, We've really enjoyed seeing your guys' photos of the fall colors this season, so keep sending them our way at flickr.com slash group slash genfall, and we'll continue to share them on our fall broadcast. And Yeah, just, make sure the location and date's on there. Yeah, and <laughs> really thank important. you guys. <laughs> Yeah, thanks so much. We've been loving doing those. It's really great to see every week and we can mm -hmm. see the progression in all parts of the park. So thank you again. So we are going to toss it over to Ranger Madison who spoke with Ranger Kevin Moses and he is going to leave his legacy behind and you guys will find out what that might be coming up next. We're here at Jewel Hollow Overlook with a search and rescue ranger, Kevin Moses. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely. So, Kevin, can you tell us why is your phone not actually part of the 10 Essentials? You bet. Here's a cell phone. And uh, many years ago, uh, folks came up with a list of items people ought to carry into the backcountry with them. And we call those the 10 Essentials. And they include things like water, shelter, uh, light sources, a map and compass, things like that. What they don't include is a cell phone. And that's partly because the 10 Essentials 
came into being long before the cell phone was invented. So my thought is we should make this the 11th essential, but not the sole essential. And the, the take home message is we want folks to bring a method of communication into the backcountry with them. And nowadays that method of communication is the cell phone. But the take home message is don't only bring your cell phone. There's so many other things that you have to carry with you. There's four knots that go with the cell phone in a backcountry setting. It is not a light source. These are lights. And nice, notice light sources, plural. You never know if, with, if you only bring one light source with you, it may die on you, you may, um, the batteries may die, you may drop it in the creek, it may break. Always have a backup, they're not heavy. These things weigh almost nothing and nowadays they're very affordable. Mm -hmm. This is not a map. It can be a map, but it's not a reliable map. Um, a lot of the map um, apps require service and this thing isn't gonna always have service. So this is a map, it's made of um, waterproof paper, it's tearproof, uh, they're very affordable. This is also not a survival kit. Um, some people think if you, if you tip it, and tip it far enough, you can drink water out of it. This is a water bottle. It can carry lots of water, okay? Water is heavy, the good news is the more you drink, the lighter your pack gets. <laughs> this is also not a sleeping bag. Some people think if you shake it really hard, just shake it, shake it, that a sleeping bag is just gonna kinda pop out of it. This is not a magical cell phone. This is a sleeping bag. And sleeping bags are bulky. They're not real heavy, but they're kind of bulky. So a lot of folks don't want to carry them just for what they think is a day hike. But what I would recommend is some sort of shelter. It is a scary time of year. After all, it is Halloween. But I feel like it's even scarier when you find yourself in a situation out here that you didn't plan for. You're absolutely right. Uh, if you find yourself in Shenandoah's backcountry and you don't have a light source, and you do have this, and it's a light source for a little while, but it's gonna drain that battery really quick, and suddenly you're overnighting uh, when you didn't plan on overnighting. Ooh, that's super spooky. I promise you, every noise you hear, you're going to think it's a bear. So, Kevin, we've heard you preach about hypothermia, and especially this time of year, what should we be prepared for? Uh, dropping temperatures. Mm -hmm. Hypothermia, what does that mean? It's kind of a fancy word for your body's losing heat more quickly than it can generate it on its own. Um, we generate heat by walking, and that's great, but you know what else we do when we walk? We sweat. And then you stop for a break. And it doesn't take five minutes after you're all sweaty and you stopped before you start getting really, really cold this time of year. So uh, layering is great. Um, some people like short sleeves this time of year, but if I were <laughs> heading into the backcountry, I would have a backpack on with, with several layers. Uh, I've been a park ranger for over 20 years, and in that time, um, I've seen some situations that didn't end well for our visitors, and it's heartbreaking. I guess my legacy is to convey that peace or that preventative search and rescue to our visitors, to have them go enjoy these glorious national parks, but to have them come home at the end of their trip and go home to their loved ones. Uh, not trying to sound melodramatic, but the backcountry can kill you. There's all kinds of hazards out there. However, that's extremely rare for people who take the time to plan ahead, carry what they need to carry, talk to visitors back home, and do bring your cell phone, but bring other things in addition to it. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want to convey. Come to Shenandoah and enjoy it, but please plan ahead and prepare, and that way you'll get to go home to your loved ones. Mm -hmm. Well, Kevin, thank you so much for sharing what you've deemed your legacy here for us today. And we really appreciate you coming and spending some time with us. And thank you guys for watching. We'll see you next week.